Lesson 3.7, variables of interest. Our objective for this lesson is to be able to identify potential problems in defining or measuring variables of interest in a statistical study. Let's start by defining variable. A variable is any item or quantity that can vary or take on different values. So for example, in algebra, you use X to represent a quantity that you don't know the value of yet. Um, in, it's the same thing in a statistical study. When we, when we say variable, we mean anything that, uh, that can change. Uh, so it's any item or quantity that can vary or take on different values. Now, the variables of interest in a statistical study are the items or quantities that the study seeks to measure. So this is what we're trying to study. Um, for example, if we're trying to uh, determine whether exercise affects uh, weight loss, then the, the variable that we're trying to study is how much a person exercises. So some people are gonna exercise more, some people are gonna exercise less. We wanna see how that change affects the, uh, that person's weight loss. Now, confounding variables are variables that are not intended to be part of a statistical study. So in our example of exercise affecting weight loss, exercise was the variable of interest, but there could be some confounding variables, like maybe some of the people in our study are also going on a diet, or some are uh, compensating for all of this, these extra calories that they're burning through exercise by eating a bunch more. Um, so that would be a, a confounding variable. The variable of interest was the exercise. A confounding variable would be increased or decreased food consumption. And so that could, could mess up the way that we interpret the results of our study. An example of confounding variables can be seen in a study that looked at the relationship between alcohol consumption and incidence of heart disease. The study showed that the more alcoholic beverages a person drinks per day, the higher the incidence of heart disease. But the part of the study that was most widely reported was this part right here, the difference between not drinking any alcohol at all and having one beverage per day. The study seemed to show that there was uh, a lower incidence of heart disease for those who had one alcoholic beverage per day than for those that didn't drink alcohol at all. And this was interpreted as meaning that in moderation, alcohol is good for you. But what the study failed to take into account is that many people who don't drink alcohol at all do so because they have some sort of underlying health problem. And so when that confounding variable was taken into account in later studies, um, those later studies did show that the best way to go was to drink no alcohol at all. For each of our examples, we're given a study and asked to identify any reasons that we might have to question the results of the study. In the first study, we're told that a survey of the wealthiest Americans found that they were willing to pay for an average of $487,000 for true love, uh, 400, an average of $407,000 for great intellect, an average of $285,000 for talent, and an average of $259,000 for eternal youth. Now, the problem with this study is in defining our variables of interest. What does it mean, for example, to have talent? Um, what qualifies as a talent? And because these variables can mean such different things to different people, to average them out and say this is what different people would, would pay for them really is not very meaningful. So the, the problem with this study is in um, defining our variables of interest. 
Our second example asks us to evaluate the statement that law enforcement succeeds in stopping only about 10% of illegal drugs entering the United States. So the problem here is not in defining our variables of interest, but in measuring them. So there's going to be two variables that we're, in, we're going to need to measure in order to say that 10% of, of drugs entering the United States are stopped. We're going to need to know how, how many drugs are intercepted by law enforcement. And that we can figure out pretty well. We can just count up all the drugs that we, that we seize when we stop the drugs. But a harder thing to measure will be how many drugs we don't stop. Because we can't just call up the drug dealers and say, how, much, how many drugs did you uh, succeed in getting into the United States this year? Um, and so because uh, the variables of interest are so difficult to measure, um, it, it would be hard to have complete confidence in this 10% figure. So the difficulty here is, is in measuring the variables of interest rather than in defining them. Our final example asks us about any potential problems with this study that seeks to determine whether radon gas causes lung cancer by comparing lung cancer rates in Colorado, where radon gas is fairly common, to cancer rates in Hong Kong, where radon gas is less common. The problem that we would expect to see here is with confounding variables, because um, even though we know that there's more radon gas in Colorado than in Hong Kong, that's not the only two, the only difference between those two locations. Um, there might be other things that are affecting the lung cancer rates in those two places. Is there um, more air pollution in Hong Kong than in Colorado? Do people in Hong Kong smoke more than the people in Colorado or vice versa? So any differences that we're going to see in the rate of lung cancer in those two places can't, um, can't be completely explained by the presence of radon gas. So confounding variables is the problem that we're going to see in this study.